Now, <laughs> my enemy is like, you know what, F you, I'm going to mess up your creep equilibrium. But that's, that's, not, that's not really too bad here. As you can see that even if your creep equilibrium is a little bit messed up, you could just just either auto attack your own creeps or auto attack the enemy creeps depending whether the creep is on their side or your own side. And for that, you could just adjust the creep equilibrium so that they either they push your lane a little bit more, or you push your lane a little bit more. So in this situation, I see that okay, well, I have less creeps, so um, and I do want the enemy creeps to push on me, so I'm gonna start attacking my own creeps. So we do just that here, and you can see that in just a wave or two or so, we're gonna have these creep wave. Uh, right back here and this is exactly where I want the place here and again I when we started this I think it was at 1430 and I was at 33 creep kills and I'm gonna stop this around 20 uh, in the 24 minutes or so in a relapsed elapsed time and I want you guys to see how exactly for the most part I'm around this area most part around this area I want you guys to see how much a, a farm could be picked up if you control the creep equilibrium up now, if I was like a quap or something, and I just press F and nuke the shit out of everything, I'm going to be like all the way here by now. And as a sniper, there's no way you can farm in that without being ganked. And right now, I'm going to look to in the uh, Sentinel view and just see how difficult it is to gank on the sniper. Well, not really difficult, but I'll constantly look at where your uh, the Sentinel creep wave is. Con just constantly look at this creep wave and just look at how annoying to gank a sniper by the tower here. You never know if there's an enemy going to be porting in like this. And uh, it, is, it is just a uh, kind of a deterrence to the enemy to be ganking here. Now I get actually pretty lucky here. As you see, I already pretty, mu pretty much messed up my creep equilibrium. But um, the alchemist here is going to just throw down a couple of acid spray into farm. Now I know there's going to be some prick going to reply to this, uh, reply to this, uh, I guess, video and be like, "Well, Luminous, you just got lucky, and your creep equilibrium thing is not really working out because if this alchemist wasn't here, um, you know, my creeps would have been here by then." And what I replied to this is that bring a magic reference, Magic the Gathering, the card game, is that I think I read it, read this in one article, is that luck is always going to happen either to you or against you sometimes luck is going to be in your favor and sometimes luck is going to be against you but really you should try to uh, abuse your playing style and abuse your skills so that if bad luck's happen to you it's, got, it's not going to hurt you as much and if good luck's going to happen to you it's going to benefit you way way more so yes I did get a little bit of breeder to have the alchemist to kind of throw down asset spray but that's not because you know I just got lucky and nothing else the whole time I am trying to keep the equilibrium and that's also a very important thing now I obviously benefit of this kind of a uh, creep equilibrium farming is that yes you are getting you're actually losing a little bit of farm because you're trying you're trying your best to deny as well as last hit so obviously you're gonna miss a creep kill here and there but in essence you're also denying a lot of farm to your enemy the reason that this alchemist went to my lane is not so that he could help me in, in terms of maintaining this creep equilibrium. The reason that alchemist went to my lane is that shit, he has nowhere to farm. Look at him. He he went here for two waves and he has to go back. He ha either has to go top, but destroyer is actually farming here, or he has to go mid where you know there's a big engagement going on. You can see that by actually just staying by actually me keeping the creep equilibrium here, I'm denying a whole lane of farm to the enemy and that is a huge advantage here again for I don't even know how long by now maybe four or five minutes so far already the sniper it's just been here free farming like a madman and there's really not much you could do here again going to scourge vision right again the these observer wards are being placed replaced by my teammates doing a very good job at that and keeping these uh, observer ward up and uh, sniper is just abusing the fact here so okay I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons of doing this the obvious pros I have mentioned really well I'm I'm keeping myself extremely safe and I'm actually denying a whole lane of farm to my enemy so that's that's huge right however there are some obvious cons to that as well here a, um, I'm not getting every single last hit because I'm actually trying my best to keep the creep equilibrium. And B is that um, you're you're actually you know you really need teammates to support. You need teammates to constantly carry team peace girls. You need teammates to actually war for you and whatnot. So and that's important as well. And also a little bit is that you're kind of it's a little bit luck dependent as well. Because generally, I think I tried in the past, the best you could do is keep the creep equilibrium as the best you can for maybe five or six minutes without any you know, exterior influence. But after that, you, you kind of have to get a lucky break. 
in terms of having an enemy visiting your lane or whatnot. Because sooner or later, like we're humans, sooner or later you're gonna just push the lane a little bit too much, and you're gonna start to lose this uh, critical boom. As you can see, I'm actually gonna lose it right here. So um, let's let's look at how oh, after this wave, the critical boom will be officially lost. So I'm just to x speed through this. And I want you guys to see here, obviously I have lost a creep equilibrium by this one. I have two siege units, two uh, necromancers and whatnot. And I wa we started actually at 1430, 1426, and we ended at 20, 2230. So that's exactly 8 minutes. I think I got 33 creep kills in the beginning, and now I have 91 creep kills. So that's about 60 creep kills in 8 minutes. You do the math. That's way more than like 3 a minute, which I, what, that's what I had before. And this is what I mean, you could farm your way back in the game, even if you're in a great disadvantageous position. And yes, I'm, I'm taking all the credit for the farming, and yes, I should be giving a lot of credit to the rest of my teammates, which have been pushing very aggressively, ganking very aggressively, and they actually gave you the breathing room, gave me the breathing room to farm like this. But again, I'm going to go back to the contrived example. If I was Quap, and even if I was given the exact same breeding room, I would just press F and nuked all my way, all the way over here. And it doesn't matter if my teammate are pushing, and it doesn't matter if my teammates are ganging. Eventually, I'm going to have someone to farm my lane. However, if you abuse that creep equilibrium, and if your teammate is actually bailing you out like that, you could get absolutely 8 minute free farm and get 60 extra creep kill. And this 6 extra, extra creep kills is going to translate into a free Yasha and around 17k extra gold. And really, that is the way you could farm back into the game. And I hope you guys actually kind of uh, could take this in, and, and bring it back into your farming game. Crypt Equilibrium is very important in terms of uh, lane control, especially in the early game, and also lane control in the mid game like this, where you could really either farm your way back into the game if you're in a very disadvantageous position, or let's say if you're late game, you know, a sniper or a deuce, like, even if you're winning, you could still keep the creep equilibrium on your side and basically deny a creep wave, an entire lane of farm to the enemy team. And denying a, a, a lane of farm to the enemy team is just huge. Basically, you're cutting their income by 33%. If you want to think about that way, that is very, very huge as well. So um, this, I'm gonna keep this DCDH relatively, relatively short. And uh, really, uh, a couple of trick of maintaining your creep equilibrium is constantly check out how many necromancers you got and uh, how many meat wagons you have. If at any given point of time that you have more necromancers than them, or you have more meat wagon or more siege units than them, then basically you're starting to lose creep, creep equilibrium. And to maintain the creep equilibrium, you gotta constantly kill your own creeps. And yes, you might miss creep kills here and there because you're constantly more focused on keeping your creep equilibrium. But uh, just think about it this way, if you maintain the creep equilibrium, you will actually get more creep kills out of that in the long run and you'll be safer and you won't be ganked as often and all of that translate into better farm overall and uh, that's it for the creepy equilibrium dcdh i hope you guys learned something and this is luminous signing off gg